everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and today I am here with my weekly Whip and Chat. If you're new or you're not sure what that is, the Whip and Chat is just a video where we're going to hang out and, well, chat for a little bit. Whip stands for work in progress. And I'm going to be working on uh, a diamond painting, actually starting on a diamond painting with you today. So let me tell you what I'm going to be working on and with. So the kit I'm going to be working on today, you can actually see the name of it down here, but I'll get you a better look at the artwork. Um, it is called Don't Leaf Me by Cute But Weird, and it's from Muni Maid. And I just, this the name of this kit is too cute for me. Um, but yes, it is, it's not too big. It's 45 by 60 centimeters and has square drills. So um, looking forward to starting on this one. I just think it's absolutely adorable. And then I have some accessories that are from my uh, recent small shop sponsor spotlights for drills and chills. And that includes um, this pen, which Bistro Blanks actually created for me. They asked if I would let them know um, any particular, you know, kits that I was working on that I might like a coordinating pen for. And I had sent them this one and look at how perfect and adorable this is. I am obsessed. I'm so excited to use it for the first time in today's video. And then I have this tray, which is from Flawa Designs. It's one of their, oops, <laughs> one of their drills and chills trays. Um, they had a couple of variations, but this is one I went with. I've never tried a tray from the shop before, so I'm really looking forward to trying that out. And then wax wise, I'm going to be using Wee Wax in my single placer. And then, which I know and love Wee Wax, I've used them before. And then I have this, which is new to me as well, which is uh, from Tracy's DP World and is putty in the scent caramel corn and I'll use this in my multi-placer and then for my minder I have this really adorable 3d printed minder from Carissa's craft corner so lots of just fun on, on theme seasonal goodies and yeah so let me see I guess first let me get my pen loaded up and then I need to actually go ahead and section off my canvas because I have not done that yet uh, so let me see. I'm going to pop this in here. There's already, okay, it almost doesn't need the washi tape. Let me see if I take it off. If it fits okay. Let's, okay, I need like a small bit of washi tape, not too much. Uh, if you're finding that your placers, especially metal placers, are ever too loose in your diamond painting pen, you can use a hot glue gun. Or I like to just wrap a little bit of washi around the barrel, and that usually gives it... Oh, that's being kind of fussy, but I think I think I've got it. And then this is old putty I need to clean out. I usually I always just use tweezers. I know some people will say, like, oh no, don't use tweezers, you'll mess up, like you'll ding the the metal of your multiplacer. And I'm just like, I don't have a better way of doing this. <laughs> and I have not run into major issues before. So I guess there's a first time for everything, of course. But uh yeah. Anyway. Um, and then let's do we wax which I have used this before. I've opened up this one and used it before. I'm trying to remember if I used it in a whip and chat or if it was in a specifically in a drills and chills video. Um, but there's that. Oh no, don't start. Don't start. You're so quiet, my doggo friend. <sighs> I'll try to start and stop as needed because I'm really trying to avoid. I know some of you say it doesn't bother you, but I have also gotten feedback from people that it really does bother. And so I'm just going to do the best I can. Okay, so I feel really bad like cutting into this adorable putty, but um, I like I, I have to somehow. I have to try it somehow. So what if I go this way? Let's see. That's the one thing about these uh, shops that do these really, really elaborate putties, <laughs> like whether it's shapes or like the actual swirls in the putty or something. I'm always like, I'm afraid to mess it up, but we must test it out, of course. Okay. So pen is good to go. I'm excited to try new things. Um, while there are always accessories that, you know, I've been working with for some of them for over four years now um, that I kind of am like, well, there's, that's always a good like fallback. I know that works for me. I also really do like when there's new <laughs> new stuff to try uh, because you never know when someone's gonna come out with something that's really you know innovative and different um, that you find yourself really enjoying. Okay, oh, I have my measuring tapes here. I had to order new measuring tapes. I forgot to open this up. These just came in from Amazon a little bit ago. Um, yeah, Micah broke my measuring tape. And so 
I was like, but I use those so often. And there was a pack of like three of these that were dirt cheap on Amazon. So um, let's see. I, let's see, 60 centimeters. How much is a 12 centimeter section? With this color blocking, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, yes, I am the person that measures off my sections. I do the math and I'm like, how many sections do I want to divide this into to make it like, it's depending on the kit. If it's got a lot of color blocking versus confetti, that'll help me decide, you know, how big of a section I want to work on. And, um, and I like them to be really even size sections too. So I'm just gonna, can't quite get it all the way out of frame because I have stuff over there, but I'll stop there. And then left to right, 45 centimeters. So what if we did um, 11 and a bit, right? 11, 22, 30, 40, yeah. Okay, so 11 and a bit, how big would that be? That'll work, so then it'll divide by four. Okay. Let's go right there. I know there's other ways that you can uh, section off your canvases. There's washi tape, there's, you know, Diamond Art Club has the perforated sections, but I just, um, I'm too much of a control freak. I'm like, let me set my sections at, uh, depending on the kit and all that, and release paper. I don't know. I I just prefer, I think, working with a plastic cover um, and washi tape sections, but whatever works for you is, is great. So let me open up the section. No, I haven't even done the washi tape border on this yet. I, uh, I almost forgot to kit up this project before this video, uh, and I was kind of rushing to do it. <laughs> um, and so I just had enough time to do that and didn't I knew that I wanted to use all these accessories that uh, I opened up from my last Drills and Chills video, but I didn't know, I don't know, I just didn't have time to grab the matching washi tape. So anyway, let's use our little cute minder buddy here. Adorable, absolutely adorable. And then let me grab a color. There's not a lot of colors in this one, actually. Um, for being a relatively small kit, it has 64 colors. It's very, very let me try to set the zoom on here so that you're not going in and out of focus. All right, that should be good. Let me grab my first color. I am sorry if I sound like my voice sounds off or froggy. I am, I feel like I am might be coming down with something or it's allergies. <laughs> it really could just be allergies, but I have a cough drop in. I'm hoping that's gonna help and um, we'll just see. <laughs> I'll cut this short if I need to, but I'm hoping I won't have to, so. Anyway, let's see how this goes. So it's got like this built-in like ledge over here, I guess, which is nice. They lined up really nicely. I'll take it. Always a little bit of a learning curve. Okay, what did I grab? The number six? All right, so we have all this color. So anyway, hello, how are you doing today? I hope that your weekend was wonderful and your week is off to a great start. It is currently Sunday evening, which is when I typically film my weapon chats. And we are just wrapping up a, well, for me, it was a relatively uneventful weekend. Adam was a little busier. Um, the kids and I were a little more just, just, just chilling, taking it easy. Um, and I am happy to be here doing my whip, weekly weapon chat. It's, um, I've had a lot of people mention like, Oh, it's always, it's just always a part of my Monday mornings, my Monday morning routine. And if that's you, um, thank you. I really, I love that. And I appreciate that. I'm glad I could spend some time with you today. Um, this kit is one that I had in mind from pretty early on that I wanted to work on for drills and chills this year. Um, there is an unboxing video that will go up at some point, hopefully this week, <laughs> I would like to get it up. Um, but I did, yes, I did film the unboxing video for it. And, um, you know, this year for Drills and Chills, I sort of accidentally ended up turning this into a, for me, my kids are extremely fall centric as opposed to having a lot in the way of Halloween. It wasn't intentional exactly setting out. It just kind of happened. <laughs> If I hadn't already planned uh, ahead that I wanted to work on this one, I might have swapped it out for something a little more Halloween-ish, but um, you know what? I'm okay with this. <laughs> uh, the Jada Gem Shop, well, no, I don't want to give any spoilers. I was going to say, I finished the Jada Gem Shop mystery kit and I could tell you like where that fell, but I don't want to, I don't want to give any spoilers for any of you that are working on it or might. Um, but that is done. That had a nice amount of color blocking and went pretty quickly and I loved that. And 
I did start on um, my dragon kit for this month, which I actually I have it right here under a couple things, but it's just this little <laughs> Make Market Michaels dragon kit. It's very small. Um, I think it's like 20 by 24 centimeters. So pretty itty bitty. And so I'll f I'm just kind of throwing that in the mix from time to time. Ah. Um, it it'll get done by the end of the month. <laughs> Uh, but it's just funny how I went into drills and chills thinking, oh, I'm so worried that I don't have any really like fall centric kits to work on. I'm afraid it's going to just be really heavy on the Halloween themes. And then in reality, it ended up being quite the opposite. Part of it was things like I had decided to do that DP with sparklers enhancement suggestion set and, um, but I already had said like, oh, I want to do this one in particular. And then I got that Enablers Outpost pump kit and spice that I knew I wanted to work on right away too. So it just kind of happened <laughs> that, that it ended up being very Halloween or sorry, fall centric. But in past years, it's been the opposite. So it's, I'm really okay with this year just sort of being a little different. Um, I'm excited to be working on a Muni made kit again. It's also been an extremely small shop centric drills and chills too. Um, I did two small diamond art club kits, but the vast majority of these kits have been, you know, small shops or I guess make market is probably not, I wouldn't technically call that a small shop, but, um, it's a, it's a departure from all the diamond art club kits, which, you know, I'll take that too, to have lots of small shop representation, lots of variety and stuff, because um, I know many people look for some nice variety. Um, but yeah, it's hard to believe that Drills and Chills is gonna be coming to an end before we know it. I, at the risk of sounding, you know, very complainy, I, I am feeling the fatigue of uh, just, this happens even if I'm not hosting the event, but like two month events just, it starts, it feels like a long time uh, to me. And I know I've heard other people express similar sentiment that it just, you know, once you really get into that second month, you go, okay, yeah, this is <laughs> getting to the end of sort of uh, the marathon, even if it's something you're really enjoying and having a lot of fun with. Um, it's just two, two months is a good chunk of time. And I think I am feeling some of that fatigue and, uh, It'll be, it'll be fun to get to really break away from doing a really event-centric kits. And I, I mean, I could have branched out a little bit more and worked on other non-event kits more, but I kind of started out the event working so heavily on my cross-stitch conversion project that I just, I already had neglected the event for that project. And so in October in particular, and after I finished that, I really just very badly wanted to get back to event projects but um it's been it's been a lot of fun I did enjoy putting up that small shop sponsor haul this uh oh, this past week sorry my throat is is starting to hurt so we'll I'm hoping this cough drop is gonna really kick in um I uh I it was fun to get to do a small shop haul because I haven't been doing a ton of those these past few months in general just sort of for, you know, practicality's sake, but um, getting to get into a lot of sponsor goodies and a lot of things from new to me shops was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I, you know, it's I love being able to sort of get back and try to shout out and support as many of our sponsors as I can. And I did, I it did feel bad that there were some shops that either I didn't get in what I had ordered from them like quite on time and that's on me for not planning even further ahead um or you know some of them maybe they didn't have like a drop or something just for any number of reasons that were not nefarious I there were some shops that didn't get shown in either of the sponsor spotlight videos and um that's part of the reason I felt like I wanted to be really clear and make like a little disclaimer in in that video where I wanted to say like this is uh, it, it just is a coincidence that it worked out this way and I will still have things coming in from a number of these sponsors that you didn't see already that I will still show in, you know, upcoming small shop hauls and whatnot. And, um, you guys <laughs> give me a hard time and I appreciate it because it's very, very well intended. And it's always good reminders. 
Uh, you guys do remind me not to worry so much about what others think, which I appreciate, you know, as a, a very hardcore people pleaser, I, I, I'm a work in progress on that front. <laughs> so, um, I try to apologize a little bit less for things that are, you know, I don't necessarily need apologies for, but at the same time, it is very, very ingrained in me, not just from like the people pleaser standpoint, but also just in general to, uh, care about how other people feel. I'm very in tune with like, is this going to make is something going to make something I do make going to, let me start that over. <laughs> I'm very in tune with, um, sort of how other people are feeling and is something that I do or say going to um, potentially like hurt someone else or give like a wrong impression that I don't intend and you know I I, I try to be somewhere in the middle in, in terms of what's realistic while that is my tendency to constantly be worrying about like how is this going to make someone else feel how is this going to communicate what people read into this I'm trying to find something that is actually a middle ground between that approach and the like forget your feelings approach because <laughs> I don't really want to go that hard the other direction either. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I worry about things like, you know, for example, something that I really wish that I had more capacity to do is to like respond to YouTube comments. And I always worry, I'm like, are people going to read into that? Think that I'm being like snobby or that I you know, just don't, don't like them or something when it just purely is a, the reality of how many hours I have in a day. Um, and always something I'm working to balance, but there's all sorts of things that I wonder, is someone going to read into this as like, oh, she's, she's doing this deliberately and it's intended to communicate X, Y, and Z. This even comes up with like, so many people will read into what companies I do or do not like work on or show on my channel. I want to be like, it's not because I was told to do anything. It's because either I haven't had the chance to try them out or I have a personal problem <laughs> or something that I, I don't care for because like I'm I'm human and I'm allowed to be like, well, there's this thing that rubs me the wrong way or that I personally don't uh, care for about this. And so I, you know, <clears throat> I'm not, not showing this or whatever, but uh I mean, there's, yeah, I know there's only so much you can do to sort of control how people are, well, you can't control how people are going to read into things or perceive you, but I, I, I still am going to try to do what I can anyway. Um, but where was I going with that? Oh, so yeah, I was worried that people would, or even like the shop owners that weren't shown in my sponsor spotlight videos, that it was going to look like. I had neglected certain shops on purpose. And I was like, I promise I didn't. In this case, like, I promise I didn't. Um, so anyway, yeah, so that, there's that. Drills and Chills, there's one more video coming up. It'll be this weekend. And um, I think I will probably do a video on maybe like some mini reviews or like a little parade of finishes of my event projects. Um, because I would imagine that I'll have this one done by then. <clears throat> and I don't know how many have I finished? Is that like six, maybe six? I can't remember. It's, it's a few. Um, so I might do some mini reviews and a little parade of my, my finishes in that video. I'll probably keep it pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. And then, um, get ready to do like the wrap up videos. Um, we have, I was just looking at the form and we have over, we've broken a thousand people that have entered for the grand prize, which is phenomenal. That's so, that's so exciting. Um, and I imagine we'll see more, you know, trickle in as we come up towards the end of the event. And I would love to go in. I need to go in and actually look at some of the pictures people have been uh, submitting to just to see like what, um, what projects people have been working on and if there are like new shops in there that I haven't heard of and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys have enjoyed drills and chills if you're participating or if there are other events you've been joining in on. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying those as well. Um, let's see, this past week has definitely been, well, it just it feels like right now in general, I'm kind of in the midst of having a jam packed video schedule. There's a lot that's been more time sensitive that's needed to 
go up at certain <laughs> dates and times ideally and so it has been an unboxing heavy week for sure and uh what's i gonna say yeah it's been an unboxing heavy week and this upcoming week might be as well um because i do still have that backlog but um like i would like to put up you know the unboxing of this kit for example and then i don't know my diamond art club sneak peeks are late again <laughs> So we'll see when those end up coming in. Um, but hypothetically, I was going to have some this week, but we'll just, we'll see what, what UPS or FedEx or whoever does and, you know, when they come in. But that is what it is. <laughs> uh, but I did the other night, um, I batch filmed like four videos. Uh, I was actually having like a not awesome day <laughs> and was very, very grumpy and for whatever reason decided to channel it kind of at the end of the day into let me be productive. Let me sort of end the day on a good note. And I don't normally sit down and film that many videos in an evening, but it was mostly post review videos. Part of it was that I had a lot of um, kits that I had completed here in the past you know, month and a half or so that... I needed to free up the storage and there were various reasons that I wanted to make sure I did dedicated post reviews like for those kits and that storage. So um, I finally sat down and filmed a bunch of those so that I could then kit down all of those kits and make some space by my desk and free up that storage. And that felt, that felt really good. But now I just, I have that nice backlog of, um, not backlog because it's not like they're rushing to get out I'm rushing to get them out but I have a I have those like kind of in reserve and it's like they're already filmed so for example if I am actually coming down with something and I'm not able to film uh, I'll at least have those I can I can put up I'll have in my back pocket maybe that's the better phrase for it is I have those in my back pocket um, and I don't know it's so funny um, there's sort of the joke like for some people that when they're really angry they do like rage cleaning or they channel it into other things like that and i don't know i i don't think i sounded angry in those videos but you'll have to <laughs> i guess you'll have to let me know um i felt like i was able to once i got in the groove of things i wasn't even feeling like upset or angry anymore i just was i was like oh good like this is something like fun i can focus on um sorry there's like a little bit of putty that got Stuck in there. I've I overfilled, I think, the multi-placer just a little bit with that putty, but which is really pretty lines of orange ABs and these leaves. And uh, I like how this is turning out, but <laughs> trying to pop those ABs in in between these ones I've already placed. Um, so let's see. Double check my notes to kind of keep myself <laughs> sort of up with what I was uh, going to talk about because, yeah, no. My brain, all just leaves my brain. Um, I uh, I have been on a mission here the past week or two. I mentioned it in last week's vlog, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I have been on the hunt at various Joanne Fabrics for these Diamond Art Club Disney Christmas kits. I believe that there are three. Um, there's one that has Stitch. There's one that has Monsters, Inc., like Mike and Sully. There's one that's like ornaments making up uh, like Mickey ears. And I, um, this reminds me so strongly of when I was really into Ray Dunn. And I wasn't, I say, I don't think I was super intense. Like I wasn't waiting in line outside stores uh, to, <laughs> to go and check things. I was not one of the crazies that was like running or anything like that. But like I would sometimes go at store opening and wait in my car and like once the doors open and like the crazies had died down, I would kind of walk in and maybe see. Um, or I'd even go in sometimes at other times of day because uh, sometimes they would stock like later in the day just to avoid kind of the craziness of the morning. So uh, I remember like I was just a casual like Ray Dunn collector and I would just kind of look for things that I thought were pretty or caught my eye uh but this hunt I've been on with Joanne's and these kits has been a, a very similar where I feel like most days last week uh I was driving to one Joanne's or another I did 
I did succeed in finding two of the three kits. Uh, I found the Monsters Inc. one and the Mickey Ears one, but I really would like the Stitch one as well. Um, and so I'm probably going to go back out to check again tomorrow because most of the ones that I went to, they were in the process of putting out Christmas, but a lot of boxes in the aisles and it was very gradual. And the one where I found the first two kits there was actually a worker there who saw me kind of picking them up to get and she was like oh those are so cute um i love that there's some like cute disney ones i said yeah i'm excited that i found these and i flat asked her i was like there's apparently also a stitch one that's supposed to be uh coming out alongside these do you happen to know like if you have that and she she you know checked she's like i haven't seen it yet um She's like, I, you know, there's a lot of boxes here. We still have to unpack. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm lucky enough that where I live I'm in Southern California, there's just, I mean, I'm lucky enough to live so close to a million options within a half an hour's drive of me. There's, I mean, there's gotta be at least seven or eight Joann's within a half an hour's drive of me. I should have placed these ABs first because the drill field on Muni Made kits is really snug, which is amazing, but trying to pop a bees in, it, especially like with putty, like you often end up with putty mess and or the ABs just don't want to pop in there, especially when you're multi-placing and I'm like, I am with a 12 placer. <laughs> We're okay, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, it looks really pretty in camera, but yeah, been on the, on the hunt and probably will continue on the hunt until I find that stitch kit. Um, I'll probably go back to that store that I had the most success with because that's the only one I've seen at least have those Christmas kits even out. And by the way, I've had a couple of people that knew I, you know, was kind of looking offer to be like, if I find it, you know, I could send it to you. And that's very, very sweet. But like, I'm, I'm confident, like I'm okay with waiting. I'm enjoying the hunt for them. <laughs> and I know that they'll, they'll, they'll be in stock. It'll be in stock somewhere at some point and I will find it. And I'm more than happy to wait and then be able to use a coupon and not have to like pay shipping and stuff. So, but thank you to everyone that has offered. That's very sweet. Um, so yeah, that's been, it's been a good, good chunk of like my mornings while the kids are at school. It's like, I'll, go drive to a Joann's and then, you know, run a responsible errand, <laughs> you know, grab groceries or something after. Um, does anyone else like that when you sort of get on a mission? It's a, it's hyper-focus as part of it too, I'm sure. But just like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it. I'm on a mission. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just take, takes me back to those Ray Dunn days. And now that stuff is just all over the shelves. They can't, they can't manage to give it away anymore. I've not jumped on like any of the other you know, popular crazes like, you know, Stanley's or anything like that at the moment. But I don't know. I think diamond paintings <laughs> and stuff like this scratch, scratch the itch enough for me. Um, <laughs> so if you're a collector of anything, you should let me know what, what that is and uh, what you enjoy. Um, if you enjoy the thrill of the hunt too. So um, let's see what else. Um, I discovered a new craft, which has been a lot of fun. It's diamond painting adjacent and you may have heard of it. It's called Pixels, spelled P-I-X-Y-L-S. And it is essentially paint by number, but it's done with tiny square stickers. I have one actually nearby right next to that dragon kit I showed you earlier. I'll grab one and show it to you in just a sec. But, um... And this shop opened earlier in the year uh, and I feel like really kind of popularized the idea of sort of doing pixel art as stickers. Like I've, I've done other sticker by number books. Um, like there's ones that are for kids and stuff that are in stores, but I've never seen this concept done with like the tiny, the tiny little squares. Um, I saw that Orloa just launched this and I don't know if they saw like pixels doing it and decided to do it as well. I, I have no idea, but um, yeah, pixels has been around since the beginning of this year and they keep adding just really, really, really cute licensed artwork and fun concepts too. Um, and what really sealed the deal for me and was why I decided to try them was because 
they signed Flossie Fox, which um, Flossie Fox is the cross stitch artist that created the stitch along project that I'm working on the night of the frost dragon. I unboxed it here on my channel. I'm doing the stitch along as a diamond painting. Jada gem shop has also signed this artist for like licensed diamond paintings as well. Like where it's, you know, printed on the canvas and you don't have to do the conversion. Um, but then pixels has these as well, sticker by number. <laughs> um, and so once I saw that they had Flossie Fox, I was like, well, this is, it, it was just really, really adorable artwork. Um, what's it called? Something with books. So many books. I can't remember the name of it. I keep blanking on it. Um, but it's really, really cute. But I got some others to try to sort of get a handle on it before I did the Flossie Fox one. So uh, this is like a sticker sheet. This one is the cottage core one. And so it comes with this sheet of these tiny little squares that are stickers. And then it has like these, you know, sometimes it's stickers, sometimes it's like an actual kind of canvas, or sometimes it's, there's like these really fun acrylic stands. She has trading cards, there's all this stuff. But um, use tweezers to place these, which I know a lot of you might be like, that's so tedious. But a lot of people say that about diamond painting. So I'm like, well, you know, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. The trick that I found is to get an extremely sharp and fine pair of tweezers. And that makes it really easy to pick these up and then place them. So anyway, this is kind of my practice one where I can get the hang of just even doing it. And then I'll be able to uh, hopefully do a nice job on the, the Flossie Fox one. But I just found myself reaching for that a little bit, that craft a little bit more than diamond painting the past few days since they came in a few days ago. Um, and I don't really know, would you guys be, I, I filled an unboxing and a little bit of like a how-to that I'm thinking I'll put up on my channel, but it's always a tiny, a tiny bit of a risk to show something sort of outside of your niche, like on your channel. And not just like, so as it can, you know, your audience might, like you guys might not, might not be a fan of it, but also sometimes the, uh, the algorithm will really like punish you for it because like, this is a thing. And I've, I've seen some other creators talking about this. Uh, even just recently, there was a creator, was, she does like book talk or sorry, booktube stuff. And she actually shows some side by sides of some numbers of what happened, um, when she did a video that was even slightly sort of outside her, like niche, like instead of just doing a romantic, it wasn't just about romantic, it was like still about books, but a slightly different genre. And uh, it did, oh no, here we go again. Um, it, it did really badly in views, like not just that video, but then it like affected, she went back to doing her normal content and the next like three or four videos after that, the views were much lower than usual as well. So, um, it's, it's, that's why I'm like, it's kind of, it can be risky, uh, because of the way that like these, these apps are designed to like pigeonhole you as much as possible. And they will literally punish you if you, you know, stretch and stray too far outside of that. So, uh, I even worried about that a little bit with just how this past week I've been putting up a lot more videos than usual. And I can't keep up a pace of six to seven videos a week. Like I absolutely cannot temporarily sure, but I am nervous that when I go back to my usual, like five videos a week that like, I don't know, is the algorithm going to punish me for that? <laughs> you just never know. And of course you can't live your life just based on that, but, um, and make content just based all around that. But it is, it's hard when you know about it to sort of, it's hard not to be at least aware of that and have that in the back of your brain. So um, all that to say, still let me know if you're interested in seeing uh, anything about those pixels here on my channel, or if you'd rather just be like, no, just keep it diamond painting. Because <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't want to turn into like a multi craft jewel channel. I, you know, diamond painting is really the only craft that I've been into for a very, very long time. But I had dabbled in sticker by number a little bit before. <clears throat> before discovering diamond painting. I like these cop drops aren't doing anything. I feel like they're just not even helping at all. I'm gonna put another one and see. <sighs> anyway, let me see what else has been going on this week. And I can chat about that a little bit. And 
So I did finally get a migraine journal like I had been talking about. I ended up getting a planner actually, a really small planner that like runs September to of this year and then through all of next year. So I thought it's a really small style planner. I thought this might actually be a good way to sort of keep it organized because then I can just go in on the day and write you know anything that I want to note on that day. Did I have a migraine or a headache? <clears throat> so I can hopefully have that data to bring to my doctor. But yeah, that was kind of something I had been uh, not great about doing. I kept thinking, oh, I'll use, I'll use the app or I'll use, you know, something else. I'll just use like my, I'll just literally write notes on a pad of paper. And I thought, no, I think I need this to be organized than that. Um, so I'm glad I finally got that. Uh, it hasn't been, lock on wood, as bad of a week for me as far as migraines go. But um, I just, I never know. <laughs> I never know when it's, you know, what's going to trigger it. So we will see. I'm hoping this week is a good week too. That is, that is the hope. <clears throat> there is a cat losing their mind. <laughs> um, I also was looking as I was catching up my, my log book when I was doing that batch for me, well, those reviews, those post reviews, I was catching up my log book and realizing that I am, I finished like 188 kits or something. And I was like, shoot. My 200th kit is not that far away. <laughs> I think that it'll probably happen maybe early next year. I don't think that I'll, I really don't think I'll get to it this year. Um, and I do want to, I don't know, when I get to big milestones like that, I enjoy working on a really special kit to kind of commemorate it. And so I'll have to decide, I'll have to decide what kit I want to work on to honor it being my 200th, you know, finished kit. Um, there's something that's maybe has a tab on it. Which drill do we think it is? Is it you? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and along with that, I have been mulling over mostly because um, you guys have been bringing it up. A, a friend brought it up over in Sophie's Dis the Crafters and Discord. Um, Sophie's Discord and. Uh, it's been on my brain. I asked about it in a recent unboxing, but the idea of like, do I want to do maybe a rainy day stash video sometime? So I, when I asked that in that unboxing video, a lot of you were like, yes, you should totally do one. So, uh, that probably won't happen till, well, it definitely won't happen till after drills and chills. Cause I just have a lot on my plate as far as videos go at the moment. But, um, Feel free to give feedback on this video if that is something you'd be interested in seeing. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say my rainy day stash, it's just a term that I you know, kind of came up with to use for kits in my stash that have uh, some kind of special meaning to me that I want to um, save and savor and, and work on. Well, when it's when it's a rainy day, I'm saving them for a rainy day. If it's like I need a, a pick me up or I need. Um, like I just want to, I want to celebrate something like my 200th kit, then I want to work on something for my rainy day stash. So, um, like I'd like to talk about what kits are in my rainy day stash maybe and like why they are, like why are they special to me or why did they make it into there? Um, so if you're interested in that or interested in hearing me incorporate anything specific into that video, I would love if you shared as much with me uh, below or you can shoot me an email. So uh, definitely thinking about doing that here uh, in the relatively near future. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm also thinking ahead to some like holiday kits because that is just around the corner. I usually enjoy taking November to just sort of work on whatever kits suit my fancy. I like to take a break from working on things that are really strictly seasonal because I am coming out of, you know, September, October, which is all about those seasonal kits. And so, um, like for example, I'm working on this really small dragon kit as my dragon kit for October, but <clears throat> have maybe some bigger dragon kits in mind I could work on in November and possibly in December. I don't know if there will be any seasonal uh, dragon kits that I'm in the mood to work on um, in December. I guess we'll see what companies come out with, but uh, yeah, and then I think I am going to extend my Year of the Dragon into January since the Lunar New Year happens at the end of January. And I already have a kit in mind to work on specifically in January to kind of celebrate <laughs> the end of the Year of the Dragon and all of my 
dragony diamond paintings that I've been working on. And maybe I'll do a maybe I'll do a little parade of dragons at some point to uh, early next year to show all the different dragon kits I worked on this year. Um, <clears throat> we are hoping to hang out with some friends this weekend, which uh, it feels like once you have kids, then things can get a little trickier as far as social time you know there are friends that we used to see like literally at least once a week when we were newlyweds and early marriage and then just when we had kids it just got it got a little trickier so um we have had this particular date on the calendar for like a month and i'm just hoping that like all the kids are healthy and that Rachel and I are both migraine free <laughs> and the plan is that we're not just like often when we get together it'll just be like just you know the wives or just the husbands like just Rachel and me or just Adam and uh, her husband instead but this time we're like let's try to get the families together let's you know hang out let the kids play eat dinner and then if we can get the kids to you know chill or Potentially, I don't know, like they're in an age where I don't know if they would go to sleep like outside of their own bedrooms, <laughs> depending on whose house we go to. Um, but then it's like, maybe we could do like a game night for the adults, but because we used to do more of that too. So we're like, we want to still be able to do that. But yeah, it just, I, that's something I, I remember thinking, I didn't expect that when, when we had kids, like how much it would really, really change just the pure logistics of friendships like a lot of your friendships tend to start revolving around um like your kids activities or stuff like that and um for us it's looked a little different because our kids you know having like special needs and like uh what it looks like for for them making friends they've moved schools a lot depending on like what program suits you know what they need but they've been at the same school now for a couple of years and you know connor's been talking about various friends that he's made and we've you know, intended to try to get together outside of school. So we're, we're getting there. We're, we're finding our footing. But um, yeah, I'm just really crossing everything that it works out for us to actually get together um, this weekend. Friday night. Friday night. It's been on the calendar. <laughs> Fingers crossed it all works out. So, um, and then I'm also, in spite of me talking about having some fatigue about drills and chills, I am still happy that it is the fall season. It keeps teasing here in Southern California that it's going to get cooler. Um, we had a week where it was in like the mid to low 70s, and that was lovely. I feel so much more productive when it is not hot outside. It literally feels like it's the opposite of, well, it's like seasonal affective disorder, but like in the... I feel it in the summer and the heat and um so yeah I'm, I'm excited for the weather changing here and also about pumpkin everything I don't particularly care how much of a stereotype it makes me but I, I just do like pumpkin flavored everything I was at Trader Joe's this past week and they're kind of known for having like almost pumpkin everything to a like laughable point um they, they've gotten better about it i remember there was one year where i think they had said they literally had like 40 pumpkin items and some of it it just was like i don't know that this really needed to have pumpkin added to it but uh no i really enjoy they have pumpkin kringles which is a special pastry that they ship in from i think is it michigan um they have seasonal flavors of that one they have um obviously like pumpkin bread, but they have like pumpkin waffles and those are really good. They have a lot of interesting seasonal things. So I am, I'm thoroughly enjoying all the pumpkin things and, um, pumpkin bread, of course, too. Oh my gosh. So delicious. <laughs> uh, as far as kiddo updates go, Connor did finally, we finally got his Halloween costume. I was delighted because apparently party city had it on clearance and there was, uh, a place like the same exact one that was selling on Amazon for like three times as much. I had to drive a little bit to get to one that had it in stock. I had to drive like half an hour, but uh, I was completely fine with that to get it for so much, so much lower. I was like, is this real? But yeah, no. So we have that in hand and Connor is very excited. And then Micah, I think we finally nailed down um, his costume because I keep asking him about it and he has said Buzz Lightyear several times now. So I don't know if the traffic light is still... <laughs> 
something he's that interested in, but I might, I don't know. We're close on nailing his down. I'm like, we gotta get it ordered. We gotta get it figured out because pretty soon it's gonna, it's gonna be too late. Um, and Halloween and trick-or-treat are gonna be here in a second, <laughs> but no. Um, and uh, we've been squeezing in a little bit of swimming. We went swimming today and because our pool, our neighborhood's pool is open through October 31st. But unfortunately we went today and we noticed like the water is like dirty. What is going on? And I'm like, did they just straight up turn off the filters early? Because that's really shady. So we're gonna like submit a, a thing in like the resident portal, but like, there were just like leaves and stuff in it. And then Connor was pointing out, he's like, yeah, the jets aren't on. And I was like, they just straight up aren't running the filters right now. Okay. So, it, I mean, it just, it looked visible, like visually just like a, a little bit dirty, but we, so we still let the kids swim. Um, I don't know if we'll go again <laughs> unless they turn the filters back on before, before the end of things, cause it'll just get worse. But that's a weird, that's a weird move on their part. I wonder if something's broken, which is why we'll submit the thing to let them know. But yeah, it was warm enough today. It got up to like 84. So we were like, okay, we can go today. We can go today. And then Micah, uh, Micah, yeah, had to stay home from school last Monday. I'm sure I talked about it in my whip and chat last week, but he ended up being perfectly fine Monday morning. Um, I didn't wake up with a fever or like any other symptoms at all. I was like, well, like you basically could have gone to school, except, you know, he had had a fever less than 24 hours before. And of course we're going to keep him home for that. But he just, that was it. That was, he just had a, a fevery night on Sunday night and then went to bed and slept it all off and was totally fine the next morning. So, um, and and it seems everyone seems to be healthy now besides me that just here at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I am not feeling great. So we'll see. <laughs> it is the season we're getting into cold and flu season. Um, and I know this, this gets brought up, um, sometimes where I, I have had some people ask, like, it seems like you and your family get sick a lot. Do you, you know, could you worry, worry about anything like, are you like an immuno compromised or some kind of like, what's the word autoimmune? I'm like, well, like we don't really have any other sort of signs of that, but you know, I don't know, I won't rule anything out, but I'm, it's the kind of thing I, I would bring up to my doctor and stuff if I were worried about it. It hasn't ever really been a concern, but I kind of am also like, I feel like part of this is just life with young kids. And we had such a good chunk of time last year where they weren't sick that I'm like, I just, I think it just might be coincidence and small kids in a classroom <laughs> being a little cesspool, but um, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, as far as what I'm reading and watching and listening to, uh, reading, I don't have anything new, unfortunately. Still in kind of that slump and that just is what it is. I keep thinking like it'll, I'll, I'll come out of that slump at some point. Um, and then watching, I, uh, my latest channel that I've been binging a bit on YouTube with like kind of commentaries and stuff like that is Jamie French. I think it's pronounced Jamie French and not Jame because it's spelled J A I M E. But she's very, she's very sassy. <laughs> Sometimes, like that dose of sass is just exactly what I need and enjoy. So, I've been enjoying her videos a lot. Um, I saw that Swoop keeps teasing that she's got some really big, like, documentary videos coming out, like, hopefully in the next few weeks. Some I really, really enjoy her videos because she does these really, really well researched and well thought out and articulated uh, videos on various topics. But uh, because they're so well researched and thought out and scripted and everything, she doesn't, it's not like she's putting out one a day. It's, it's a little more spread out than that. So I feel like I, um, you know, always watch them. I'm like waiting for the next one. <laughs> so hopefully she'll have some more out soon. And then um, listening to, oh, also watching, I saw that Pixels actually has a YouTube channel. It's a pretty, I mean, there's like 600, 700 subscribers, um, but she, I was going back watching some of her videos. because She's got a small back catalog, which she was talking about just sort of um, videos she's done like since starting her business. And I've been really enjoying watching those. And, and she's just very relaxing to listen to as well. And she even did like a kind of whip and chat style video. I was like, oh, she's one of us. <laughs> um, I don't know if she came from diamond painting. I think she might have, but um, yeah, so that's fun. 
it's fun. And then listening to, uh, kind of like the usual, like Taylor Swift. <laughs> and I was excited to see that she is back. The Eras tour is back on. It's like the last leg of it. And it's just sort of fun to see the various theories and things that people talk about coming out of that. Um, and it's going to be weird when that tour ends because it feels like this has just been such a, I don't know, a big part of being like a Swifty for over a year now. I did, I was very, very lucky uh, and was able to go last year when she was in LA. Um, and it was, it was amazing, like bucket list type thing, but that was a whole year ago. <laughs> um, I feel very lucky that I was able to do that. Um, and then as far as what I have coming out this week, like I said, it's, I still kind of a back catalog, a backlog, right? Sorry. Of, uh, videos that need to go up like at certain times. Like there's a lot of Halloween kind of related content that I would love to get up before Halloween is actually here. It's mostly unboxings. So it may be another unboxing heavy week. Uh, some of it's going to depend a bit on the mail. We'll see what it does. Uh, and maybe some reviews in the mix too, if I can make it work schedule wise, cause I have all those reviews done now. Um, and then drills and chills week eight, the last weekly eight, uh, weekly video will go up. I dropped a drill. I heard it fall, but I don't, I don't see it anywhere. Uh, so that'll go up on Saturday. There'll be one last set of prizes to, to give away then. So be sure to check on that if you are interested in entering for those. So I know I'm a little bit shy of an hour here, but I am just like, my voice is just shot. I need to go take a break. Um, so thank you for hanging out with me today. As far as my thoughts on what I used, um, I like the tray. I found myself pouring, as you probably saw, too many drills. I tend to gravitate towards like a, a bit bigger tray when I have a lot of multi-placing. So this is a tray I might use more in a kit that's more con confetti heavy. It doesn't have as much multi-placing because I go in here with my 12 placer. Um, the wax I've used before, I still love it. Uh, the putty is is new and it's, it, I liked it. It's on the softer side. I would probably want to try to dirty up it up a little bit more before I tried multi-placing ABs again, but overall had a good experience um, with the putty and it smells really nice and it's really cute. And the pen was great. It's definitely a thicker turning, but I didn't find myself um, having any trouble with it or finding it uncomfortable. Uh, I just thought it was just, it was just really cute to get to work with it. So Really love the pen. Thanks again to Bistro Blanks for creating and sending that to me. So, and then of course the Minder. The Minder was my little adorable companion here. So all's well with accessories. I hope you enjoyed. If you made it all the way to the end, how about we do a fox emoji in honor of this artwork and this kit and let me know how you're doing and what you were working on. Thanks again for joining me today. I uh, typically am a little bit more <laughs> upbeat and my voice sounds a little bit less wonky. So thanks for bearing with me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more diamond painting videos from me. I'd love to have you here. All right, friends. I hope you have a day in a week that's as amazing as you are. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.